relative dating versus absolute dating. What is relative dating? Well, if you look at a family, can you put the family members in order from oldest to youngest? Grandma's going to be the oldest, of course, because she's the grandma. And we're not really sure if mom or dad is going to be oldest, but let's just guess and put dad next. And then mom. And then the older sister. And then finally, little brother. We've just arranged the whole family in order from oldest to youngest ages, but using relative ages. If you want to do this like a geologist, you're going to put the family in order vertically. The oldest family member is going to be at the bottom, and the youngest family member is going to be at the top. Rock layers do the same thing. The oldest rock layers are at the bottom. Just by looking at the rock layers, we can see that the dark orange layer is the oldest. And the pink layer is younger than the dark orange layer, but it's older than the beige layer. And the sandy layer is the youngest layer of them all. And we know that a fossil that appears in the pink layer is going to be older than any fossil that appears in the beige layer. And if we were to find a fossil in the yellow layer, that would be the youngest fossil of them all. It's kind of like five-layer bean dip. It's a tasty treat you might have at a party. If you've never tried it, you definitely should. So what you do is you put the beans at the very bottom, and that is the oldest layer in the bean dip. On top of that, you put some guacamole, and then some salsa, some sour cream, a little cheese on top, and the cheese is your youngest layer. Scientists call each one of these layers in rocks strata. So let's call them strata and our bean dip too. Why not? It's a party for scientists. Stratigraphy is the scientific study of layers. And that's usually something that we study in rocks. And if you want to really impress people at your party while you're eating your tasty five layer bean dip, you can tell them that this bean dip observes the law of superposition. That means that the newer layers form on top of previous layers. Either way, Let's eat. If you go someplace like the Grand Canyon, where there are a lot of layers in our earth that are exposed, you'll see that the oldest layers are found at the bottom and the youngest layers are found at the top. So relative dating means putting events or objects in chronological order without including actual dates or ages. But absolute dating is a little different. Let's go back to our family again. Absolute ages are measured with numbers. So if we want to measure the absolute age of each one of these family members, we could look at their birth certificates. And we'd find that mom is 37, and the daughter is 11, the little boy is 7, dad's 39, and grandma, well, she's not going to tell you how old she actually is. She prefers relative dating because like a lot of grandmas, she doesn't really want to say her age in numbers. Absolute dating in geology or archaeology is the process of finding a numeric age of rocks or fossils using radiometric dating. So what is radiometric dating? Radiometric dating examines the ratio of one isotope to another in rock to determine its age. Isotopes are forms of the nuclei of atoms of a particular element that have differing number of neutrons. For example, carbon atoms always have six protons. That's what makes them carbon. And usually, carbon atoms have six neutrons too. This isotope is called carbon-12 because six protons plus six neutrons equals 12 as the total number of particles in the nucleus. But Carbon can also come in other varieties. Carbon-13 is an isotope that contains six protons and seven neutrons. And carbon-14, which you might have heard of, has six protons and eight neutrons. These are the three stable isotopes of carbon. You can use isotopes to find out the age of rock. 
And the most well-known type of radiometric dating is uranium to lead dating. This is how it works. You take a rock that you know probably has some uranium in it, usually in a small crystal called a zircon crystal. And as you can see from the screen, the process is really complicated. Uh, basically, you start with uranium-238. That means there's 238 particles, protons and neutrons, in the nucleus of this atom. And over time, this atom loses both protons and neutrons and slowly turns into something completely different. So it goes through many steps. And eventually, it ends up being a stable atom that is lead 206. Now, if you calculate the ratio of uranium 238 to lead 206 in the rock, you can figure out how long the uranium has been decaying. And that gives you the absolute age of the rock. Here's a simpler way of showing it. So the red dots are uranium-238 atoms, or isotopes. And over time, some of them go through that very complicated process and turn into these blue dots, which represent lead-206. You've probably heard the term half-life. The half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years. This just basically tells you it takes a really long time for half of those uranium-238 isotopes to turn in to lead-206. But by knowing how much, how much there is of uranium and lead and comparing those amounts, you can calculate the age that the rock has been around. Another type of radiometric dating that you might have heard of is carbon-14 dating. Carbon-14 dating also uses the radioactive decay of uh, carbon-14 isotopes but it can only be used with materials that were once alive and that lived fairly recently, within the last 50,000 years. Now, I know you think grandma is old, but 50,000 years is way older than grandma, even though she's not going to tell you her age. I hope you've learned something from this. I learn something new every day. Thanks a lot.